The Prophet ﷺ was once asked by Sa'id ibn Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sa'id ibn Zayd is from Al-Ashar al-Mubashireen, the 10 promised paradise. He said, Ya Rasulullah, you know my father, Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl. You know him and he's dead. Is he really going to be in the hellfire? You know, what happens to him? And who is Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl? He's a man who the Prophet ﷺ knew before the Prophet ﷺ received revelation. And Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl, even whenever shirk was widespread, before the Prophet ﷺ even made the call to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, he was from the few individuals who said there is no way that all of these idols are our gods. It just doesn't make sense. Not only that, but he used to speak out against the idols. And he was the nephew of Al-Khattab, the father of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was his nephew. And he knew that there is no way that these idols were gods. Rasulullah reflected, he said, you know what, I remember one time I was sitting in a gathering with Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl. And they were serving meat and the Prophet never ate meat that was slaughtered in the name of the idols. So the Prophet passed. And then it came to Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl. And he started to say to them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you these animals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for you from the skies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for you all of these means. And then you slaughter in the name of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Speaking out against their practices. Used to go to the Kaaba. Asma bint Abi Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says that he used to put his back to the Kaaba. And he used to say, no one of you is upon the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam except for me. What you are doing is not the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam. I don't know what it is, but it's not this. And he used to make a dua. Asma radiallahu anhu heard his dua. And Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu. He also narrates this from his father. He used to make a dua. And he used to say, Allahumma law anni a'lamu ayyul wujuhi ahabbu ilayk. Oh Allah, if only I knew which path was most pleasing to you, I would worship you according to that path. But I don't know Allah, I don't know what it is. And he made sujood, and he cried, and he said, Look at that sincerity. Oh Allah, just guide me to that which is pleasing to you. And eventually he is oppressed and beaten by his uncle so much that he's, he leaves the haram and he goes looking for guidance around the world like some of his companions did, just a few people did. Looking to Christianity, looking to Judaism, trying to find guidance, trying to find Tawheed. He's not finding it. And you know what else he used to do? When Allah Azawajal says, وَإِذَا الْمَوْعُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ And when the young girl that was buried alive, the disgusting practice of the Arabs when they used to bury their daughters alive, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the very early revelations, whenever that young girl speaks and says, for what reason was I killed? Why was I murdered? Before that ayah was even revealed, Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayr used to go to the places where the, the ditches on the outskirts of Mecca where they would bury their daughters and say, don't do that. Give her to me, I'll take her. And would raise these girls until they would reach the age of marriage and then marry them off. Subhanallah, no ayah, no Qur'an, no nothing. No, he didn't meet the Prophet ﷺ after he received wahi. And as he's traveling the world, and he finally hears that the Messenger ﷺ has come out from the place that he left, on his way back to Mecca, he dies. So he never got to see the Prophet ﷺ and say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Can you imagine that? Subhanallah, this man's lifelong journey, you might think to yourself, wow. That's a tragic ending, right? Zayd never got to have that moment. But his son, one of the first to become Muslim. So his son is saying to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, you know my dad. What is his situation? And Rasulullah ﷺ said, I have seen on the day of judgment that the nations will stand behind their prophets. Each nation will stand behind the Prophet that was sent to them. And how many Prophets were there? Someone other than the Mashayikh? How many Prophets were there sent to mankind? Anyone know? 
124,000 prophets, anbiya, amongst them 315 rusul, messengers, in the authentic hadith in Ahmed by Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Out of 124,000 prophets, each of them will be standing on the day of judgment. The Prophet ﷺ said some of them will have large nations behind them, and particularly Musa alayhi salam. Rasulullah when he sees the nation of Musa alayhi salam, he would think it's his nation. Then he would see his ummah come forward. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. His ummah come forward and they would dwarf the nation of Musa alayhi salam. And the Prophet ﷺ said, some prophets though will stand with very few followers. Some with seven, some with ten, some with two, some with one. Can you imagine a prophet who spent his entire life in da'wah and has one person? And Rasulullah ﷺ said, some prophets will stand with no one behind them. And you know what the Prophet ﷺ said? And I have seen your father, Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl, standing as a nation on his own. SubhanAllah. He's going to be all by himself on the day of judgment as a nation, as an ummah of his own. You know why? It was here. It was already here. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to us of the Quran and the Sunnah is that which agrees with our fitrah already. That which agrees with our natural behavior already, what is already inside of us. The problem is, is that sometimes we don't choose to honor that fitrah.